Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about GNOME OS 49. This is a new release. This is the beta version, in fact, and I can't wait to tell you guys all about it. So without wasting further time, let's just dive right in. All right, welcome to GNOME OS 49. So let's begin the tour. I think a lot of you guys are going to be familiar, but still, let's just go through it for the sake of formality. Press the super key to open up the workspaces view and then you also have the all apps and you do get the workspaces over here these are dynamic workspaces by the way let's move on to the next one you do have a powerful search so you press the super key again and you don't even have to click you can just start typing anything okay and as long as it gets a match it's going to show you for example console this is not terminal right i mean the name is not terminal but it still shows up you get your characters, you get your clocks, you get your software, everything that you can possibly want to open, it's going to come here. All right. Next up is the organizing with workspaces. So, I mean, I guess all of you guys already know this. We do get dynamic workspaces and uh, you also get a pill shaped indicator to show which workspace you're on. So you have two, for example, if I open up text editor in this. Another workspace is going to show up and you're going to have, I mean, <laughs> this looks like an emoji. You're going to have uh, beautiful workspaces over here. Okay, moving on. You swipe up and down. I am inside a virtual machine, so unfortunately I can't show this to you guys. So you can open the overview with a swipe of three fingers, left and right to swipe to switch your workspaces. And that's it. Okay, so before we dive into what's new this time around, uh, let's just talk about the basics of GNOME OS, okay? So, I mean, we already talked about the workspace indicator. You have your uh, notification drawer and your date and time. You can add events, uh, add world clocks, and set the weather location as well. To the right, you have your control center, I mean, control panel, not control center. I guess you could call it the control center or control panel, whatever. So you do get the option to take a screenshot and then settings. Uh, you can also lock your computer like that. Let me just open this up quickly and then you can turn off your computer, log back on, suspend whatever you want to. You get your uh, audio settings over here. You can change that. You get your network settings, you get the power mode, you get the dark style or light style and the do not disturb button. OK, and then we already talked about the workspaces and then this is your dock at the bottom. Very typical. And then the apps which GNOME ships with. And then again, you have the installer because this is GNOME OS nightly. I have not installed this. This is a live environment just to show you guys. So with that out of the way, uh, let's just quickly go to what's new this time around. OK, OK, so this is a 95 Linux article and we are going to talk about what's new this time around. So before that, you also get a notification pop up, I guess, the first time you boot up into GNOME OS saying that GNOME really needs your help. Your donation will sustain our open source project for future generations. If this is possible, please, please, please donate to GNOME. This is gnome's 28th anniversary so I'm a little older than i am it's uh it's beautiful to hear that and coming from five weeks after the gnome 49 alpha the gnome 49 beta release adds a redesigned search popover to the nautilus file manager so we're going to go ahead and check that so this is the nautilus file manager if you click on the search button and click on this you get the file type so audio documents folders whatever you want to you can also search by file types and then you do get the date used and the text matching, which would be content and file name or only file name. It also adds media controls to the lock screen. Now, unfortunately, I do not have any media over here to show you guys. It also adds a new wallpaper. Like I said, pretty good wallpaper. Uh, very clean looking as always. GNOME has fantastic wallpapers always. Although I will change this for the thumbnail. You also get a new donation reminder notification to help users to help to encourage users to help GNOME. This is what I already talked about. Again, the beta version of the GNOME 49 desktop environment also improves keyboard navigation in the extensions app, switches to using dynamic users for creator sessions in the GNOME Display Manager or GDM by enabling system D based session management and Webflow authentication support for Nextcloud and online accounts. So if you didn't know, you can go to, I guess, settings. And you can go to online accounts and here you can connect to your next cloud account if you have one. OK, moving back, GNOME 49 beta also replaces the events document viewer with the new papers app. So again, let's check that out um, so we can search papers. And as you can see, it says document viewer, but this is actually 
the papers app. So if you go to about document viewer and click on what's new, by the way, I really love this what's new button. This is just a beautiful way of telling you what's new without you having to like, I don't know, go to the internet or something. It's just baked into the app and this is just so good to see. So it says they are, they are announcing papers uh, as a part of the GNOME core set of applications. This is really good to know. I mean, the name is still document viewer, but it is actually papers. And then it, they do go ahead uh, listing some of the improvements that they have in this version of papers. And you also get the options for restart and shutdown actions from the lock screen. That's amazing. And GNOME 49 also improves the icon assets in the login screen's accessibility menu and adds support for per monitor brightness sliders in the quick settings. So actually the control panel that I was talking about, this is actually called the quick settings in, uh, in GNOME, I guess. And you don't have brightness over here because this is inside a virtual machine. But if you had this installed on your bare metal system, uh, then you would get the brightness sliders. And if you had multiple monitors, then of course you would have these in all the different monitors and then you could just adjust this as per your wish and the brightness would go up or down in the individual monitors without affecting the other ones. Okay, now next up is Epiphany. So the GNOME web browser also received a shortcuts dialog. Okay, let's, uh, let's check that out. And since this is Epiphany, we can go ahead to keyboard shortcuts, I guess, and then you can see the entire list of shortcuts. So this is general, navigation, tabs, miscellaneous, view, and editing. Web app at the extreme bottom. So if you want each of the different categories, you can just click them and uh, see what's in it. So next up is the GNOME Maps app. So this has received additional icons for public phones and clocks, as well as a POI search option for vegan and vegetarian restaurants. So that's pretty good. Let's open maps real quick. Um, where's maps? See, it's incredibly fast. Inside a virtual machine, it is so fast. I mean, of course, the internet is a little bit spotty in my area. So uh, things like Street View and stuff, they are gonna take a little bit of time. But again, this is maps. It's, it's a very, very good functional app. I really, really love maps, by the way. Uh, moving back to our article. And GNOME software also received system D based startup support. So that is pretty good. GNOME calculator received a dialogue to show the conversion rate, download date and source support for all the United Nations treasury supported currencies, support for categories in the function popover, redo button in the header bar, improved handling of the logarithm function and support for special cut, copy or paste keyboard shortcuts. That is pretty cool. A calculator app, a good calculator app is always necessary, whether it's in your phone or on your computer. So this is the basic look. This is the advanced with your tan sign, et cetera, et cetera. This is your financial look. Here comes programming and then keyboard and lastly conversion. This is where the uh, the changes have been made. So for example, let's go to currency. We can choose British pound sterling. So for example, we can change that to, um, let's say Colombian peso. Okay, so maybe 12 British pound sterling is, oh my God, 65,000. And as you can see, if you click on this little I button, it says exchange rate details and the British pound sterling information was obtained from the International Monetary Fund, but the Colombian peso, it was taken, the rate was taken from the United Nations Treasury. That's pretty good. You can open this uh, link to go to the United Nations Treasury page, but yeah, that's it for calculator. It's, uh, it's a pretty good app. And I love it when uh, small things like these uh, make an app so much more useful to uh, work with. Anyway, I think Treasury is having a little bit of difficulty loading up inside my VM. So we're just gonna close that and continue on with the tour. Among other noteworthy changes, the GNOME session is no longer started via a shell script as all of the necessary setup is now done in C. Moreover, GNOME 49 beta adds the XDG terminal exec as the default terminal launcher, increases the document font size to 12 points in G settings and desktop schemas, and it reintroduces snippet caching in the mutter window and composite manager. Last but not least, the new snapshot webcam app has also received some improvements. So uh, let's just go to what's new and read from there because I believe uh, that's, that's better. So we're going to open camera. We're going to allow camera access, but it's not going to show my face because it's inside a VM. We're going to drag this over to a new workspace and see. Now let's go to about camera and let's check what's new. So 
This is the Snapshot 49 beta release. It prefers the H.264 or MP3 format, MP4 format if possible. It uses the GTK's YUV support if available. Mirrored QR codes can now be scanned. Support for hardware video encoding. Remove video format G setting and updated translations. So again, what's new is a beautiful way of just having that small amount of information for the curious people inside the app. You don't have to dig through the internet or go to their website even. This I think is an outstanding thing for them to do. And I think with that, we come to the end of what's new this time around. The actual release is gonna happen on September 17th if, it's, if it doesn't get delayed. So with that, we can comfortably continue on with the tour of the software manager and the settings and then we're going to call it a day okay so let's just open software manager man i love gnome software manager and i'll never get tired of saying this i love the cards they put up and uh i mean each of the apps it looks pretty good uh so you have screenshots you have a little bit of the description you get the add-ons and then you do get the download size and if it's safe or not i mean this is safe definitely but this is a flat pack. This is not a system package. That's why it says it's potentially unsafe. This is my best guess. And it's adaptive, so it can work on different form factor devices. And it also has an age rating with the version number, the community um, build certificates, and different websites to go to with regards to the software. You also get reviews and ratings. And this is pretty good. I mean, this is the best software manager that I think personally, at least in terms of looks. In terms of speed, that would be the Cosmic Pop Shop or Cosmic Shop, whatever it's called nowadays. And you also get cards, you get the editor's choice, a, news, a new and updated. And again, you do get the installed and updates tab. Everything is up to date. And yeah, that's it. You can go to each of your apps and check their screenshots. You can read up about them and then you also get, if this is a GNOME project app, by the way, you also get other apps by the GNOME project. This is helpful to give you a brief overview of the other things that are also available under the GNOME banner. Now let's open settings. And I'll give you guys a brief overview of settings because most of the things you guys already know and then we're gonna wrap up the video. But we're gonna talk about the uh, wallpaper section, so don't forget that. So we get region and language, date and time, users, remote cell, remote desktop, secure shell and about. If we check about, you can see they also have the donate button, so you can click on that. And while it loads, we're gonna, we're gonna continue on with the tour. So you see my processor memory and system details. So we are getting Linux kernel 6.16. That's the latest, I guess. And we are on Wayland. And by the way, GNOME 49 disables X11 by default. I mean, it's been on Wayland for forever. I think ever since GNOME 40, it's been on Wayland. So that's that's not really a surprise. And let's talk about the support of the future of GNOME, supporting the future of GNOME. So you can be a seeder, I guess, $10 a 15 month, 25, 50, 150. And if you are in corporate, you can also be I guess bronze tier, silver tier, or gold level of a sponsor or supporter of GNOME. And you can also have a one-time donation. I guess a lot of people are gonna go with one-time donations, but uh, if you are able, if you are in America, or if you do have a little bit of that disposable income and you are interested in GNOME, interested in the future of GNOME, then you could become a, a supporter. And that's always a good thing. Let's just go to appearance. So. I mean, you do get your default theme. You, this is the light theme and then the dark theme. Dark theme looks really good. By the way, let's go to dark and the wallpaper should change. Yeah, I mean, this looks fantastic. It's a little bit dark. It looks really good. And then I guess we can change the color to yellow. This looks pretty good as well. We have a couple of new wallpapers this time around. This looks okay. I think this looks fantastic, by the way. Uh, let's just change it over to the light theme. And yes, this, I think this is absolutely amazing. And I think most of these wallpapers you guys have already seen before. I'm not gonna go through all of them. These are pretty good, even if they're old. And apart from that, you get your usual network, Bluetooth, it's not gonna pop up here again. I'm inside a VM. Displays with your usual resolution, rotation, fractional scaling and stuff. Although it's not enabled right now. Night light, sound, power, and again, you're gonna get high performance mode as well over here if you are installing this on a bare metal system. 
multitasking, hot corners, active screen edges. I think you guys already know everything about these and then apps. So each of the apps, if you click on app details, it's going to take you back to the control. It's going to take you back to the software center and you can see the details. And if this is a sandbox app, it's not going to have the banner on top. And you can also revoke or enable permissions for that particular app. Again, notifications, you can have lock screen notifications. You can turn on DND so you see the icon changed. And these apps are currently enabled for notifications. You have search settings, so you have app search, search locations as well, and then different apps. You can also include weather. I like to include weather, online accounts. We already talked about that. Sharing, so you can have file sharing or media sharing. So file sharing would be uh, you can I mean you can set up a password, you can have a uh, public folder, and then this would be your address for file sharing over the network. And then for media sharing, again, I mean, you add a folder, you choose your network and you turn this on and that's it. This is really simple and easy way to do, to go about this. And again, this is one of the most important things. This is well being. Okay. So I'm on the system for about 32 minutes and this is inside a virtual machine. So like everything is, I haven't used the system before. So, um, it's, it's really empty. And then you can set a, set a screen time limit and you can change this, I guess, to, okay. So once you exceed the screen time limit, so this is like one minute, everything turns gray and the desktop doesn't really look interesting anymore. So I guess this would prompt you to close your computer and check your, uh, like check your eyes and stuff. But again, if you are a fan of the, uh, Kurosawa mode from, uh, Akira Kurosawa, maybe in Ghost of Tsushima or whatever, from wherever you have found out, maybe if this black and white appeals to you, then, then I guess you can continue to use your computer this way. Anyway, let's come back to the land of colors and continue on with the tour. So we do also get eyesight reminders, movement reminders, and you can also play a sound when your break is over. Apart from that, not much mouse and keyboard, uh, color management, printers, accessibility. This I think is really necessary and you should have the accessibility menu on over here. And then you have seeing, which so the screen reader, high contrast, on and off shapes, whatever. And for hearing, you have a lot of things. Over amplification is one of the things which I really recommend turning on because what happens is most of the laptops, they come with drivers for Windows uh, audio. So without those particular drivers, sound in Linux is often very low. So what you can do is even though this is not for accessibility, particularly, you could just increase the volume and have your speakers play at something uh, which is audible instead of like a very low percentage, I guess. You also get visual alerts and you can flash your screen, typing, pointing and clicking. There are lots of things here. Gnome is a very mature, very, very modern, um, I guess, desktop environment. This is just amazing. Although, I mean, yeah, I guess a few people have complaints and I mean, uh, and not everything's going to be to your liking. That's okay. You always have KDE Plasma if you want a more traditional Windows like operating system with more settings to tweak. But in and of itself, GNOME, I think it's, it's fantastic. And the way Ubuntu customizes GNOME, by the way, that is also pretty good. I know a lot of people hate Ubuntu for canonical, for stuff that canonical does. But then again, um, the way they customize GNOME is really, really good. Okay, so with that, I think we come to the end of the video. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.